Praise the Lord. Church, I said, praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see how to conquer, how to overcome, how to sail through all the storms in our lives in Jesus' name. The storms of life will not drown you. You will not stop your journey halfway. Tonight is such a deep, interesting study, and I pray you'll be awake. I will be awake. Oh, you said you're a preacher, you have to be awake. You know, there are preachers who do so while they are preaching. And sometimes, uh, you know, I've heard of somebody that does like that preaching, and then he fell down. And I had to take him out of the pulpit to, you know, continue uh, the service. But I will be awake. And you will be awake in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this study. Thank you because you are still present in the midst of your people today in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray no storm will stop any of your children in Jesus' name. Everything we study today, we're praying, oh Lord, it will work effectively, effectually in every life in Jesus' name. We will not study in vain. The study will benefit everyone. I pray, Lord, you increase the faith of every one of us in Jesus' name. Confirm your word tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're looking at Mark chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 35 all through to 41. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day, when the evening was come, he says unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Let us pass over unto the other side. Let us pass over unto the other side. And when he had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the sheep. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him. And say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he rose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. There will be peace in your life. And the wind ceased, it has to. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that she have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Those verses I've read to you, the seven, look at verse 35. The passing over to the other side. Passing over to the other side. The same day, when the evening was come, he says unto them, let us pass over to the other side. Verse 36, his presence in the sheep. That is, as they were all in the sheep, his presence was also there. 
that's in verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. He'll always be in your boat. He'll be in your family. He'll be in your heart. He'll be in your life. His presence in the ship. Verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Three, the peril of a great storm. The peril of a great storm. Number four, verse 38. And he was in the inner part of the ship asleep on a pillow and they wake him and say unto him master carest thou not that we perish that's their perplexity about his sleep the storm was great the storm was high their lives were in danger and he was asleep on the pillow they were perplexed Carest thou not that will perish? Their perplexity about his sleep. Verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. Somebody shout amen. amen. And the wind of your life ceased. And there was a great calm. That's number five, the power of our Savior. No storm will withstand the power of the Savior, even tonight in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 40, and he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? The problem of their shallowness. They had been following him all these years and they had seen the great things he had done. And he also had given them the assurance that the power of God will be with them. And he was telling them, you could have done that. You could have silenced that wind and you could have stopped that storm your faith will rise. The problem of their shallowness. Verse 41, And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The perception of his sovereignty. The perception of his sovereignty, that he rules, he rules the sea, he rules the storm, he rules the souls of men, he now perceived his sovereignty. Tonight, we are looking at that passage, the great event that reveals both the humanity and the deity of Christ. On the one hand, the passage reveals the humanity of Christ. He was tired and he slept. That's the humanity. But then the passage reveals the deity of Christ. He rose up from his sleep. And then he commanded the wind, peace be still. Only God could do that without praying to another person but with his own authority as the sovereign God. He said, peace be still, the deity of Jesus Christ. As man, he was tired and he slept. As God, he controlled the wind, controlled the waves, controlled the sea. Tonight, the topic is great calm through the master's intervention. Great calm. Through the master's intervention. There will be intervention in your life. 
Say good amen. amen. The Lord will intervene in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Great calm. Whatever the storm, great calm. Whatever the challenge, great calm. And whatever the storm the devil is raising up in your life, in your family, in your Christian journey, in your progress to heaven, the Lord is going to bring every storm to a calm in your life in Jesus' name. The things that perplex you and the things that trouble you and the things that want to stop your journey halfway, the Lord is going to deal with everything in Jesus' name. Great calm through the master's intervention. In our church, we'll see the Lord's intervention. In every family, we'll see the Lord's intervention. His power will avail for you. His presence will avail for you. His promise will avail for you. Calm, great calm through the master's intervention. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the personal proclamation of our infallible Christ. The personal proclamation. He himself said it, and he said, let us pass over onto the other side. And what he proclaimed, and what he declared, there is no Satan, there is no devil, that can contradict that, that can make that to fail. Christ is infallible. Christ is irresistible. And Christ is incomparable. If he says anything in promise, in power, with his presence, it will be fulfilled in your life. The personal proclamation of our infallible Christ. Number two is perfect peace in an irreconcilable crisis. The crisis that rose up, you couldn't reconcile that with what he had said. He had said, let us pass over onto the other side, and then a crisis arose, irreconcilable, and the disciples couldn't understand, how could a, how could a storm come? How could a crisis rise up when Christ, in authority and power, had said, let us pass over onto the other side, irreconcilable. And yet, the Lord is going to grant us perfect peace. Number three, the prevailing power of our irresistible Christ. Christ is irresistible. His power is irresistible. His prophetic prediction is irresistible. And he has that prevailing power. And the Bible tells us very clearly, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You'll find him sufficient in your life even today and this year and beyond in Jesus' name. The prevailing power of our irresistible Christ. Point number one. Tell me number one on that side there. The personal proclamation of our infallible Christ. Look at Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day, when the evening was come, he says unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. That's the proclamation that Christ himself made personally. The personal proclamation of an infallible Christ. Let us pass over Onto the other side. Look at the end of the storm and look at chapter 5, verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over 
unto the other side of the sea. His word will always be fulfilled. His promise to you will always be fulfilled. His declaration, proclamation will always be fulfilled. It will be done in your life in Jesus' name. If Christ has spoken, it will come to pass. If Christ has announced it, it will come to pass. If Christ said it, it will come to pass. The sea may roar, the storm may rage, but the words of Christ will be done. Satan and sinners may be furious. His word, all the same, will still be fulfilled. That's the sights I see. Terrifying sounds I hear. And all those sights and sounds may feel the horizon. But all the same, the word of God, the word of Christ will prevail. Tempest raging, billows rising, demons threatening, torrents of anguish, heights of anxiety, depths of grief, winds, waves of wrath, all may shoot up their angry look. But all the same, all that Jesus Christ has said will be fulfilled. The wind will obey his voice. The waves will obey his voice. Whatever he has said will come to pass. Did he tell you something in his word? It will come to pass. Did he give you a promise in his word? It will come to pass. Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. You need to say amen to that one. The sky may roll over. The earth may be in turmoil. The sea may roar. Challenges may come in your community or anywhere. But whatever Jesus has said must and will be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. At the word of the Father is infallible, as the word of the Father will always be fulfilled, so the words of Christ also will always be fulfilled. Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of man that he should repent, as he said, and shall he not do it, he will do it. As he spoken, and shall he not make it good, behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. What are we learning from here? Jesus has spoken. The storm cannot reverse that. Jesus has declared, let us pass over onto the other side. And the winds and the waves cannot reverse that. Whatever promise the Lord has given us in his word, no one can reverse it in our lives. Your life will be exactly as Jesus has promised. What he paid for on the cross of Calvary will be fulfilled in your life. 
all right, will be fulfilled in my life. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth. That's the prophecy looking forward to when Christ will come. I will raise up a prophet like unto thee, Moses, and I will put my word in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Whatever he said, the Father put it in his mouth. Let us pass over unto the other side. And the Father knew about that. That word will not fail. Look at Acts chapter 3. For you to understand that what we read now in Deuteronomy is referring to Christ. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 20. In verse 20, here is the declaration of the word of God. And he shall send, tell me the name, Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration, restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Look at this. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever. He shall say unto you. That's talking about Christ. And when he says, let us pass over unto the other side, you'll hear him, you'll believe him, you'll get ready to pass to the other side. And whatever you see on the way, you look away from that because you will get to the other side. You'll not remain on that other side of weakness forever, on the side of confusion forever, on the side of weakness and powerlessness forever. You're going to move on to the side of victory as Jesus has decided and declared concerning you in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 46, I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 46, reading from verse 10. It says, declaring the end from the beginning. Before they got there, they said, let us pass over unto the other side. And he declared the outcome. Even as they were beginning the sailing out and the outcome of your life, victory, power, fulfilled destiny and joy at the end the Lord is declaring let us pass over onto the other side declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done let us pass over it's not yet done and Satan thought he could turn that upside down and they raised the storm and the wind against the word of the infallible Christ. Satan has failed. Satan will always fail. And in your life, and in our church, and in our families, Satan will fail. Because he declares from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, 